from JT. Take it away from JT. Take it away, you're right. Yeah. Stealing it away. By panic. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the magic. That's actually what Good happened. Ones, anyway, it's literally just a Twitch ban. Let's move on with our lives. Yep. Last time they banned Zyra and Maokai as well. They've been banning Maokai twice now. Yeah. Uh, Morning obviously liked to play Maokai quite a lot earlier today. And it's fine on Poppy though. I think, yeah, I mean, again, Maokai, Poppy, Potato, Potato, it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> well, there's more skill to Poppy. Like, lining up the heroic charge and getting that consistency sure. is a bit of skill to that one. Timing as well with the set press presence, landing a good ultimate. There's more to it. Maokai, hit the W, click on a target. There Let's you go. go. I've engaged. Uh, LeBlanc, though, going to be the first ban from J Team. Uh, Tam Kench, take it away from J, was a big de uh, decider in the last game, honestly. Yeah. Denied three of the big ultimates from Immortal's composition. Ended up being even better than expected because the models fell so far behind, so whenever they tried to team fight, it would be like one by one by one kind of trying to go in. And then Tom Kench is obviously fantastic, you know. Like it's just an so Ash arrow, yeah, that's gonna eat that guy. And then if no one follows up and kicks the other squishy carry somewhere, they will then obviously if Devour's back up. You know, yeah, Devour's gonna come back up later and he's gonna save another target. So that ended up being super uh, effect or super effective for J Team and I guess it makes a lot of sense banning it away. First pick wise, we might see the Syndra first pick again. Rice has not been contested in this series at all. Um, both mid laners probably not really too hyped about the pick specifically. We still have the Lee Sin Rek'Sai trade we've seen so often. We have the Poppy Nautilus trade we're most likely going to see again unless some of the teams want to switch it up. True, true. Uh, Bard, Maokai, and Syndra to be expected. Of course, Darius first, Darius pick. first pick. Classic. <laughs> the classic. Uh, Cassiopeia was good for Fofo last game, but it wasn't the reason no. really why they won. It was more him getting uh, fed off of mistakes from Immortals. So first pick, Ash over to IMT. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you ban away to Tom Kench, who is obviously very annoying to play against when you are Ash. So first pick it makes a lot of sense. It's really been like the S tier 80 carry so far in the tournament. Uh, just because, again, super strong laning base and ability to set up plays so, so effectively. Let's see if J-Team is afraid of Dardox Rek'Sai that he carried on in Game 1. Or if they're afraid of his Lee Sin that he didn't carry on in Game 2. And it looks like the Rek'Sai is the one they respect the most. Cassiopeia is not as strong of a pick now because Orianna is still open. And Popella can just play Orianna into Cassiopeia and at level 6, Orianna starts actually winning that matchup. See, that's what he does. He doesn't have to pick it now. He's in no rush. There's a Leeson over to Darlock as well. Darlock didn't have the best performance last game. It wasn't due to his mechanics, more decision making. So, And he's definitely fine taking Leeson again, just instant locking yeah. it, just like last time. Zyra Karma, like the two supports we're looking at, uh, as we often see, and there's the Orianna as mentioned, which is a big difference because the last game, in case you guys missed the pick and ban phase, J Team banned Orianna and then first picked Cassiopeia to avoid that potential counter, but now Paul Builder gets it, and that is really important for Immortals. Very good setup so far to really punish the Cassiopeia in mid lane. Like once again with the level 6 and Orianna ulties, Cassiopeia has to flash, and then there's just an easy follow up gank because Lee Sin shows up, and Cassiopeia can't really do anything. Let him try and stun him, which to be fair did work. And Immortals just matching mid laner for Jungler and likewise vice versa. Poppy picked up here for J Team as well, getting the priority on the top laner they wanted I mean, for Morning and the Thresh pickup. Just give me Zyra and Nautilus here, and I think Immortals have won this pick and ban phase. Uh, Zyra Ash is gonna win the bot lane against any AD carry that can be picked on the side of J Team. And then you have a good matchup mid lane. I guess. There is case to be made for Alistar. Uh, some people like picking tank supports against Thresh again because he can't punish them hard enough in the laning phase. And if, if Thresh ever engages on the AD carry, Alistar just combos the enemy AD carry. And if you engage on the Alistar, well, you don't obviously really want to do that. So it opens up for these much stronger team fighting supports when the enemy team has locked in Thresh early. Still think just going straight for pure laning phase and dominance uh, is my preferred strategy. 
but obviously Mortal's also testing a lot of things here. As you can see, there's so many differences. They could have just gone Kama's Ira here, but no. They said, now we're going to test out this Alistar against Thresh specifically. Also picking a, a carry top laner here against Morning. So picking up that cannon. Uh, we saw the matchup the other way earlier. Uh, Morning, game one, had that cannon into the poppy. Had some great team fights, but eventually outscaled there by the poppy. We'll see if that remains true for this third and final game. It will be the decider for Group A. Winner advancing to semis. Final pick, gonna be uh, that Jin there. Risky, risky pick here from J Team. I mean, you are playing Jin, Cassiopeia without any proper peeling. Thresh is not proper peel against like Hard Engage. Janna is proper peel against Hard Engage, as an example. You're playing Jin Cassiopeia against Alistar, Lee Sin with a shockwave from Oriana and a flank from Protobelt Kennen. Immortals, if they get out of the laning phase, which they should be like they should be able to get out of the laning phase, even that bot lane in the 2v2, and not be behind, they're gonna have a big advantage when it comes to starting these team fights here. And if they can just execute properly, they're gonna get to these carries every single time with their composition. And then it doesn't matter Poppy Rex is sitting in front of them, because they're not gonna stop you from getting to these carries. Might stop the Alistar from headbutting, but then suddenly the flank from Kennen is gonna happen. The Lee Sin flies past the tanks, and then these squishes in the back, they're gonna get shock with, they're gonna die. And then it's just straight up game over. A couple seconds remaining until we get into game, guys. We have no hashtags for you. Usually this is where I'd call them out. But we're here in the OGN studios for IEM Gyeonggi. Really hyped to see how this final game turns out. We're about to find out as we head into game. Here we go, game three of this decider set. Group A, Immortals versus J Team. This will decide who will be heading to semis, who will be leaving us. And we'll get into this one. This will be our final game, regardless. That is how this tournament format works. And of course, best of threes work. Someone will have to win this game. There are no draws in League of Legends. Fofo has Unless been revealed. Unless you're yes. All right, fair to be fair. Yeah, that's true. But not in this format. In the best of threes, it has to be a winner. It has to be a winner. Definitely true, and as we talked about a lot in the champ select, Immortals getting better answers against the Cassiopeia now with the Orianna pick, even with Alistar, very specifically picked for these team fights, where it's easy for Alistar to get onto these carries. Yes, in theory, a Poppy can sit in front of them with W and like stop the headbutt, but most of the time Poppy's TPing in to join the fight, and then Alistar is already engaged on the back line, and Thresh is not the answer when it comes to peeling against so many forms of engages. One of them he can handle, yep. being at the least and flying in, he can flay that. But when it's but not two like or three of them, <laughs> there is very little good old Thresh can do to then save his two squishes in the back. But obviously, Jay is going to try and create some picks with the Jin in the bottom lane. For now, though, we get to see... So what I'm also doing here is they're actually baiting that Dardoch is starting on bot side. So they hit the red buff to take a little bit of damage. So you can see there's a little bit of damage taken on the side of Oli on the Alistar. And they walk into lane in bot lane, same timing as if they were actually leashing red buff for Dardoch. So now J-Team thinks Lee Sin started on bottom side, but he actually started on top side. So it's all mind games from Immortals here. Let's see how they use the pathing then from Dardoch. Just doing a full clear on top side, and really right now, J-Team has actually no idea where exactly he is on the map. So really, uh, just pulling everything out of the bag for this final game, because this is the elimination game, so use all the tricks that you have remaining. So very cool to see a little bit of adaptation there. Actually, in this mid lane, he's thinking about this mid lane gank. He's level 3 against Pobelta's level 2. Seeker lands, that's the ghost being popped. Pobelta still has his flash and will hold on to it, so we'll work out for him. Dardoch didn't show. Didn't show, yeah. He just went through the mid lane. We'll carry on to his uh, Raptor camp now. 
Uh, Fofo still has that advantage in the mid lane now over Pobata, clearing away this, so five gold in the bank. And we've seen this Rek'Sai gank in mid a few times now, where you just do like red buff into Crooks, and then you get level three, and instead of going top lane to gank, you just go straight to mid lane. Uh, much easier lane to gank, obviously, this early on with the Rek'Sai, and try and force like a summoner. Top lane was also open. Kennen is pushing now, but would have been a little bit too late for Archie. Obviously, he wants to go straight into a gang and then do a camp. Dardak now has been getting a full clear bot lane. Has not shown yet. Just walked past the mid lane. Doesn't seem like Immortal, Immortal has anything else planned after their fake leash. And he will just get a full clear, get to go back to base, farm towards level 6, and then look for openings on the map. Flame getting a nice push in the top lane as well. 10 CS differential. Morning's going to resolve most of that oh, as it heads into the tower, though. Lane. He is looking for that lane gank here. Deficio, Cody, Sun, and Ollie. Maybe trying to set this up for him. Ollie does have that flash, so trying to get in range for that one. Yeah, sadly, the bot lane of J team is just too far back. Uh, it's not often junglers after starting red buff will then do like the entire clear towards blue buff and then go all the way back down to crooks. So J team definitely did not expect Dalek to be on bottom side there, which could have been the reason for that fake leash and then try and set up a gank at like level three bottom lane with Alistar like flash combo and knock someone back. But because the lane is pushed towards J team's tower, Dalek not able to do anything and has to just go back after he's pulled then wait for camps to respawn Archie around mid lane for a second time. Pobelda is pushing and will now ward and actually try and find and get him with the plant as well, spotting Archie on the map. Archie heads back to his jungle. He knew that Lee Sin had cleared out those uh, Merc Wolves. Dardock looking for a gank in the top lane, mourning down to about a third health. Could be a uh, good gank for him, but we'll see Archie now. Double pings go down, and Morning trying to make his way all the way back to his tower, but he's just gonna walk up and just take him out. Yeah, really smart play here from Dardak. He doesn't just Sonic wave towards Morning and then like follow it up, because then he gets interrupted by the Poppy W. He literally just instant ward jumps to Morning, surprising him, so he's not ready with W, and he just goes straight into melee range off him, and then he fires the Q and actually kills him. Really smart play from uh, Dardak, and doing the unexpected. So Morning is not ready to either flash or use his W, and therefore he goes down. Smart play. And this Lee Sin is also a good start after a strong first clear and now first blood as well. Yeah, more of what we were expecting to see from Dardock's Lee Sin in that game too, but this time also made the right decision to go with that. Yeah, and much better laning phase from Flame on the cannon compared to what we saw Morning do in the first game of this series. Flame was able to push it all the way into tower. Being able to keep Morning like fairly low as well on HP. It was all Flame's work getting Morning down to 40% HP and then Dana could finish him. So and good. he got the assist as well. He so got it's the not assist. Like he didn't lose out from it. He's a happy man. He denied yep. some CS as well for Morning. Might see a follow up gank. Use the Blast Gun to jump over so you save all your abilities as the Lee Sin. Uh, Morning, he's already used the W, so Dalek, as long as he can land the Q, which he does not sidestep from Morning, would have been a secure kill. But either way, well played by Morning there with a nice cheeky little sidestep. And I like we see more and more how junglers are using blast cones to jump these walls into the into the river bushes, just to save abilities they can use for the gank. We've seen it with Rek'Sai saving the tunnel, so they have it for the gank. Now saving the safeguard from Dardock, so he had it again. Once he actually entered lane, smart thing to look for when you are a jungler in solo queue as well. Archie gets it, but might die. Nope. Good flash out of the ultimate there from Poe Belter. He'll be staying alive for this one, so uh, hopefully that still was worth it for him. Probably not for the flash. But he at least got away with his life and has been farming up a storm while Darnock has looked for those ganks. Flame continuing to push in this top lane. Significant advantage over Morning now. Yeah, he just needs to just keep the pressure up here. You want to keep chunking this Poppy down so you can threaten to dive her again with Lee Sin up in the top lane because we know Poppy's gonna. Hit that late game point where she's just like unkillable. Kenan can't really touch her. But until she hits that point, you can put pressure in that lane. You can try and abuse it. And that again, that's what we like to see in a meta where everyone's just picking tanks, tanks, tanks. When you change and pick that carry, you can play around that lane. You can get an advantage, try and take that tower down on top side instead. And then when you do TP to the bottom lane, you're two or three zero cannon, and you're much stronger than the pop joining, and you can really use that to snowball games. Right now, almost doubling the farm from Morning. 
Flame Horizon may get to use his namesake here in this game. Yeah, because if Morning stays, then Dardak will just hand off blue buff to Poe Builder and then just go top and kill him. You can even see Ollie is on the way, joining Poe Builder here. Morning just cancel his recall. He's gonna regret that, because two members are on their way. Didn't even stop to give blue buff to Poe Builder, because they didn't want to show their position on top side. They wanted to save that for later. Don't want to reveal anything. And now they're ready for dive number two. Morning realizing something is wrong because there's only Ash showing bottom lane. There's no support at the moment. Interrupted anyway, 3v2. Only coming in. Well, there is Archie to try and salvage the situation. Probably Copter being charged after. Takes away the minions, Q lands. W comes up. Morning's down for the count. Archie was not able to get that counter guy in cough. And Arnie trying to make his way out. Trample has been activated. Flame landing the Q. And the exhaust is about to slow him down, but Fofo coming out, lands the flash ultimate. Oli will be the sacrificial cow here, a one-for-one one trade. So one-for-one one in the end, Immortals had to wait a little bit too long. Jay doesn't really have any damage. No, but he does have an ally to come after him, using a nice W coming out. Dalek will smite away the blue buff, but not enough help to keep him alive. Really well played by Jay at the end. Yeah, just as we could predict the top lane dive, so could Jay team. Knowing that Morning was under pressure, they saw the Alistar was missing bot lane. They're like, okay, they're surely here on top side. Immortals had to wait with the dive, and then when they went for the dive, oh, they missed a lot. Jay with another big play. Another great hook into the lantern, but Pobalto with the return shockwave is enough to keep him alive. Jay locked up, and Oli comes in as well for the follow up. Regardless, BB's there with the ultimate coming in, raining down hell on Oli. No ultimate to speak of. Pobalto trying to keep him alive. But fourth shot is enough to kill him. Archie in very deep. Dardock trying to get in there. Does not land the Q to follow up. So J team get the slight advantage. Yeah, Jay's being a, a boss on Thresh at the moment, walking around the map, making plays. We see some of their synergy issues there from Immortals and the new roster. Oli, of course, the newest member on the team, tried to go for the full combo. Cast us again. There we go. Uh, get the replay instead. This is again where models have to wait for such a long time. Like, look how much time they're spending top here. Look at your minimap, guys. Now people are moving from the mid lane to join them top. Morning does a good job trying to buy a little bit of extra time and keeping models under the tower. Ghost being popped very early as well from Fofo to get to the top lane faster, and they're able to collapse and return. But we just saw that synergy issue where Oli goes in for the full combo when Poe Builder was not in a position to move the ball like it's very short range actually the Q from Oriana so he wasn't in a position to move the ball to actually deal damage to Jay so Oli just ended up doing his combo for basically nothing and then he was stuck in there with no flash and he ended up going down a second time because you're always looking for that cowball combo did not work out this time Jay though playing out of his mind having a lot of good picks definitely uh Deserves the name of J and J Team because he is carrying this. It's team. obviously, yeah, that's what the J stands for in J yeah. Team. It's just J. J's <laughs> team. <laughs> it is J's team. <laughs> and he deserves it. 0 0 2. Fantastic hook follow ups. Dardock trying to get this bottom lane tower with his team. Reaction from Archie, though, means that he cannot make that happen. And Fofo was thinking of coming down as well, just in case there was a, a fight. But he'll go back to mid lane, clear out this wave and even up that farm advantage. So we are back to even four now in terms of gold. And the plan doesn't necessarily change too much for Immortals here because they still have that winning matchup on top side. The only other advantage they have now is Alistar is six. You have Ash Arrow as well. So if you're able to push in the bottom side, you can force a dive, but it can be very tricky to do. And you know then Morning is gonna TP down as well and you're investing a lot to the dive. But Dardak is down here to try and pull off the play. They want to really just make sure Flame can keep pushing topside and get damage on this tower and just slowly take it down. Because that's just going to be a free objective for Immortals without any counterplay from J-Team, really. And that's going to be extra gold then for the North American team. Here's that dive setup or the potential of it. They're actually Arrow airing. Been launched, but it's actually Anchi who gets the lock on the Poe Belter, followed up by the Petrifying Gaze. Poe Belter down, Dardak trying to get out. He's slowed out by the trap from BB, but the Bats Cone will knock him right into a Cassiopeia. Meanwhile, Ollie being chased down by BB. Nice kill over to him, and Dardak corralled back into Cassiopeia. Third shot lands, four for zero. J Team 7 and 2, massive advantage now over Immortals. Yeah, really hard to see what actually happened because the camera cut away just when we saw the engage in the bottom lane. But as we talked about, that dive bot lane could be risky and 
Let's see what actually happens there. Arrow just straight into J. Good exhaust as well, and then he gets the strength of the Colossus, or Curse of the Colossus shield coming in. And really just not the target you're looking for. Their shield from the Keystone is just too strong, and Fresh stays alive, and everything honestly goes wrong here for Immortals. And it, it's in a situation where you have that winning top lane already. This top lane tower is down to about 10%. You could just move Dada top lane, push in with Flame and just take that tower for free and there's nothing J-Team is going to do as a response. Because diving for them, bot lane is also risky against, of course, the Alistar. But instead, Immortals overplay their hand. Significant overplay. 2,000 gold advantage now to a J-Team. Three kills in the mid lane, three kills to the ADC. Looking pretty dire for Immortals. And last game, they're able to stall it out because of some mistakes from J Team. But they weren't ultimately able to bring it back. All right, we're back to uh, plan number one. Let's get that top lane tower down. That's what Immortals is saying at the moment. This basically means that there's nothing Morning can do because Dalek is on top side, and that tower should go down if Flame just hits it once or twice. And then you take that objective and you just make sure that you're. Bot lane doesn't get dove on the bottom side. Well, that jumps in, safeguard lands. Uh, Maelstrom comes out, but Archie's instantly there with a the follow up. Morning should be going down, but he's still alive. Dardock trying to get away here. Will jump towards his minions, lands a kill onto Archie. Just enough down to finish it up along with Flame. Very clean double kill to the cannon. Yeah, that's the play we wanted to see before here. Finally, Mols takes the tower down and they even get two kills in return. J team now the team overplaying their hand, thinking they can stop this from happening and take the 2v2 trade against a 141 CS cannon with an already completed proto belt. Backfire, big time. Those two level advantages as well for Flame. Might have gotten the last level after the kills, but at least a level advantage for him. So both teams are making over aggressive plays. Yeah. Both teams getting punished for it now. This is the correct move by Mortal's bottom lane as well. You know you just invested everything on top side, so just step away in case the enemy is going missing because then they might actually dive you. But as soon as they realize it's just Fofo and he's on his way out, they can return. So now it's a free tower for Immortals. J-Team not getting anything in return. So good answer here. Fofo is still getting scary again though. What a great game he had before. And I'm really glad to see him show up because he was one of the guys we hyped. We talked about this in the last series. 17 year old like wonder kid from the LMS. Yep. And been having some really good games except for the very first one today. And generally you could say the same about the entirety of J-Team in that first game. It wasn't necessarily Fofo who was uh, leading the team to their demise. But definitely later and the further this tournament has gone on over the first day, Fofo has been stepping up. On the bright side for Immortals as well, Flame, three kills, pretty big himself, two item spike. He gets into those team fights, can get that perfect Smeb ultimate. Uh, Archie. Burning in the flash as well from Poe Valtus, so very messy game once again. Lots of kills, lots of action. I mean, I like it. I actually think this game, uh, there's, oh, of course, yeah, there have been some over-aggressive moves yep. for sure. But I think uh, most of the plays you can defend and say, no, actually, here, it makes it makes sense what yep. you're trying to do. Messy doesn't necessarily uh, mean bad. It just means there's been a lot of action yeah, and I mean, sloppy play. I think very naturally, in a standard lane meta, you just have some of these games where there is more action. And when there is more action, when there is more plays being forced, there tend to also be more mistakes. Like, yeah. that's just how it naturally is. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think, actually, again, most of the plays in this game have been pretty good. And Flame is setting up for a big play mid. He has a lot of damage with that Void Staff completed as a second item. Trying to go for a dive, but a lot of JT members are moving towards this mid lane. Might actually be a 5 on 5 team fight. Gotta be careful. And Flame now under attack. He's gone a little bit too deep as he was trying to get back to his team. Curtain Call is nicely blocked out there by the Cow. Uh, no casualties on the side of Immortals, so for now, they are good. Get that nice zoom in of Flame. Does suck a bit for Flame losing the flash here, but good defense from J-Team. Trying to hold this tower now, but Rex has bot lane and Morning is coming from top. Trying to maybe see if they can flank. Morning is moving behind Immortals at the moment, Dalek is trying to do the same. Yes, Puppy! Well, it lands the verdict onto Flame. That wasn't hyped at all. No, it, uh, I thought we were going to get a big team fight, but... Yeah. No one else ready to uh, engage. And everyone seems to back away. Kind of waiting for that Ash Arrow to be fired as well, but it's on cooldown right now. And he's bot lane. He's ready to split push. 
Yeah, he's uh, still pushing around, but this bot lane tower is very low, and if they can defend mid on the side of Immortals, they will be able to get that free tower, so them kind of forcing J-Team to defend the mid tower allows Cody Sun to just push up the bottom side and get that tower down, and J-Team not able to respond. Second tower going down, but J-Team cannot really react. Yeah, very easy tower for him, so he's good to go. Ollie's there as well to support him, just in case a single member happened to come down, and then the ultimate chain lands, and there's going to be a kill. So, tower over to Immortals, and also the Dragons, so nice bit of spike in power, and they have regained the gold advantage. So, Immortals actually in pretty good shape right now, after a pretty disastrous early game, where J-Team were able to pick up kill after kill, and solidify their gold lead on both the mid laner and ADC. And it's good to see Flame on a carry, taking over the lane and honestly just using that massive advantage on top side to create this goal lead for his team because he's sitting with an insane CS lead. He has taken down that tower, he's picked up kills. And once he gets that flash ready again, he's in prime position to like carry a team fight. And that's kind of the next step in this game here. We're gonna get one of these big fights. And it's Most building likely. towards that tension point. To Fisher, the breaking Definitely point is. that we are looking for. Thought it was going to be Morning who was going to crack that one open, but the team wasn't really there to follow up, despite him landing the ultimate onto Flame. Yeah, and we see one of the problems for, for Cassidy UP is when you actually get to Seizure on a tower, like, it's really hard for it to clear the wave fast enough, so all of J-Team were kind of just forced to sit, sit behind the tower. They couldn't instantly kill the wave and force Immortals back, and they were just kind of stuck there for too long, and allowing Cody Sun to go bot lane as well, and just very easily push that tower. Ollie is setting up for a potential dive in the mid lane. Yeah, he sat next to the blast cone. Maybe try and set up a sneaky cow play. But not today. There is a lot of deep vision though from Immortals playing this very well. Yeah, it's Rift Herald will be saying goodbye to him for this game. They're basically forcing J Team to take like longer routes to try and walk between like mid and top lane and defend these tier two towers. And I like the fact that when you know you have a blast cone next to you, you can be a little bit more aggressive in your positioning. Because you know you can just step up towards the blast cone in case the enemy shows up and just like kind of fire yourself over the wall. So Oli probably felt pretty safe despite being behind enemy lines. And there's really no objective to fight over at the moment. It's too early for Baron, Dragon is already dead, and the tier 2 turrets are gone from the team that is behind. So Immortals are kind of like, we can't really push tier 2 towers just yet. There's too high of a chance of us getting flanked and... It's hard for us to kind of push three lanes at the same time and then getting a siege set up this early in the game. Yeah. So you're kind of just waiting right now for like second item spikes. Infinity Atron, Ash is one of them. Death Cap for Poe Builder. And then you can start seeing like the Bolts Force. They can try an arrow on the tower on someone like Jin in a 3v3, 4v4 situation and try and see if they can then Shockwave after. But that is one of the only places they can pull up right now where nothing is really happening on the map. <laughs> Dalek taking away that uh, Merkle flare, I believe. Yeah, that kind of becomes the place. Like, we can't get any big objectives, but we can get all the small objectives, which is like your jungle camps. Yep. Uh, farm. Exactly, we can kill your wards, we can put our own wards in your jungle, and we just kind of take over the map and we deny farm from you because we, you, you're winning the map at the moment. And then you look for these openings. Oh, hello. Is that a Baron Rush? Fofo clearing this one out. Jay's gonna drag uh, BB into the pit as well, and Archie's there to uh, attack this one up. There were so many people on the bottom side, but this is risky. Immortals are on their way oh, over. Nice. Flame, he has his ultimate. Be ugly. He doesn't have his fast though, but he has his proto bell. Dardock does not land the Q onto the back. Oh, he's he finds the steal. Archie gets out with the tunnel, but Fofo goes down, and Flame, huge ultimate onto two for the double kill, and a big swing in momentum. J Team realized. They were losing the map. They didn't feel like they had a good way to force a fight, so they tried a sneaky Baron. Problem was that Blue Trinket Ward was in the Baron pit, so they saw them when Fofo had to kill that Blue Trinket, and they could instantly react and rush over from Immortals. Could have been a good play. But it turned out to be a very disastrous one in the end, giving two kills and a Baron over to Immortals. And now actually, he tries to find a pick onto Ollie, but... Blast Cone! Blast Cone hype! No, oh, we didn't get to see it. Uh, Man, that ward at the Baron. Hashtag value. Just allowed Immortals to react and get that fight. And of course, Dardock stealing the Baron. Yep. 
As predicted in the last game. As predicted. <laughs> it was a, it was a series long prediction. It was. Video. So this is the the fight. Gets the Q on to Baron. Jumps in. Got down to 77 HP. With Archie's might be used first, then Daleks, I believe. Might just been just like a hit as well on it. Takes down the Baron and puts Immortals in prime position to win this game now because you have so many tools to kill the backline of J Team. And especially a backline with no flashes. That is like too easy for an Alistar, Lee Sin, Oriana combo. And in Kennen as well, he's only 5 0, you know. Yeah, only 5 0 1, only has triple items and will one shot your entire team. Right, right, yeah. I guess we can add him in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six to seven in kills. 6,000 gold advantage. This game has swung so hard after the early game. I was like, damn, J Team uh, may be able to take this game away from them with all those kills going over to them. Just stick to the top lane, boys. When you play a carry up top, play when around it. Get Ken and Fed. Just play around it. I mean, at this point, Immortals can die. Like, they can just dive if they want to put the ball on uh, on Alistar and just combo like Jin or KCP and Shockwave, and that's a kill. Or Ash Arrow, that works too, but you gotta follow up then. Yeah. Okay. Oriana ultimate onto Archie, and that's a lot of damage. He's ticking down. Not sure if it's gonna be enough damage. Flame catching around the outside, but it is enough for Immortals to take away that inner tower. And Miasma. Not doing a whole lot against this minion line. Baron minions, difficult to take out. But Cody Sun not able to step up to the tower. And he is quite low himself. So, they'll take the inner tower. But that will all, uh, be all that Immortals can take off of this first push. Can go take Dragon another well. Cloud Drake. Winning the jackpot today on the side of Immortals. rotations. Cody's being left on Dragon taking duty. Yeah, might not be able to do much more with the Baron buff just now because Cody has to go back, kind of reset the whole thing. Doesn't matter too much in as the way for Immortal to win this game is through a big team fight anyway, and not like necessarily sieging turrets. Mm -hmm. So Baron buff is a bonus, but not needed to win the game with their composition. As we've highlighted multiple times, the amount of ways they can get to that back line of J team is just too much, honestly, for J-Team to deal with. They need to really outplay Immortals in these fights. And, of course, Foco and BB are very strong players and have been playing really well today. But it's going to be hard for them to do it. Yeah, especially when Flame Moments has a 5,000 gold advantage over Morning. Oh yeah. my god, Flame almost Flame Arise. Yeah, I was, man, I was waiting for it for so long. Uh, and then Morning picked up a big wave and I was like, god damn it. But he is only uh, 90 S away. And will Flame Horizon Morning. Exciting. Hardly carrying away these wards. Lots of deep vision. Good to see they're continuously picking up these control wards. And good guy Dardock with the double control ward pickup along with Ollie. So they can Classic team keep player. pushing it in. What a team player. Definitely deserves I actually just pick. I just want to see a dive. Like I know they're not gonna do it, but until the flashes are ready on the side of J Team, it's such an easy uh, like kill. Yeah. But it's risky, obviously, you have a big advantage, no reason to try and throw it away. If they know the timer's on the flashes, then they can look for it. Otherwise, try and wait for something else like that. Flame getting caught though. out. Yeah. Maybe Archie's the one getting caught out. Nope. Nice lancing from Jake. That means Pulse. It's probably time to wait for Baron. And it's at least over two minutes away. I know that for certain. Because there is no timer. And Cody son, he is uh, by himself a co-wilter. So, yep, looks like we are going to be waiting for Baron. Two minutes on the clock. So, yeah, we've got two minutes to kill. That is one of the things uh, I feel like is needed in the game. Like, there needs to be... Oh, never mind, Jay. No, he's fine. Like, there needs to be some other way to kind of push your advantage and get into the enemy base. Because so many games, ever since, like, Worlds, basically, or even, like, playoffs, or like, you get an advantage early, you clear out the three or the six outer turrets, and you just kind of sit there and you're like, alright, uh, it's really hard now to like push all the way into the base, because everyone gets like home guards instantly, so if they just recall back to base, they're instantly out and defending, and a lot of them run a lot of wave clear. Uh, what teams used to do, you like get like ban off command to stop like evict or something from killing the wave, and you try and use that, but a lot of games slow down a lot. Let's run this team. 
yeah, around this time they slow down because you kind of you need the the first Baron is where you take all the other turrets, like the last tier two turrets, right? And then the second Baron is where you get into the base and you break the base open, and sometimes you even need a third Baron to get all the inhibs down. Um, we've definitely seen those things before, but on two Barons, typically you are inside the base, and that should be enough to kind of have a big enough advantage to, to close out the game. But the problem is, Immortals were not able to crash that base in the first place. So without that inhibitor down and super minions pushing down the lane, well, then yeah. we're just in this situation. However, it's where you get the second Baron, and then that opens. But the great thing about being a caster when you're with Deficio is he will fill that two minutes for you. So we were waiting for that two minutes. And we've only got 15 seconds there left. There we go. And then Baron's ready. Boom. Sane. Good stuff, good stuff. And we've got the Flame Horizon as well. Everything's coming up casters right now. We're getting it. Oh, potential flank. Uh, or not. Never mind. The J team have had a lot of anticlimactic engages. It's like, yeah. here comes Morning with the verdict. Ah. Uh, <laughs> to be fair. at you with the knock. Uh. Yeah, flanking when you have Cassiopeia Jin. It's also pretty damn useless. Yeah. They're never gonna follow up anyway. They're yeah. like, hang on, so hang on. Far. We'll get really, there in a minute. Really far away. You kind of waiting for Molotov to pull off their flank instead. Should be uh, a lot more explosive. Flame versus blue buff. Stealing everything in this game. You don't even need that blue buff, silly cannon. Actually, it's pretty good because you get AP. Yeah, that's true. All that juicy energy regen. All right, Baron is up, boys. That means we start the Baron. That means we get to action now because J Team will have to try and stop this Baron or lose the game. Ward over the wall from Archie. Sees it. 4,000 health. Q over the wall from Dardock. What you doing? He's going to kick away Popo. Jump back to his team. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage. Redemption. Pop up. Good uh, prediction with the flash from Fofo there. Knowing that Dalek will try and kick Flash him back anyway. Or Flash kick him back. And therefore he stays alive. But had to use both summoners. That means now Oli should look for Fofo. Just put the ball on Alistar. Flash combo on the Cassiopeia. And Shockwave and she is dead. Means Send in the cow. The next four or five minutes. Immortals should be able to find Fofo in one of these fights. Operation Explosive Cow. Send them in, nuke the team, bring in flame for the flank. It's a juicy team fight ready to happen from Immortals. Just gotta get that set up. Yeah, you can also actually just use Flame's TP and then he can just one shot the Cassiopeia. You know, both work. Yep. I like seeing the Alistar combo with the Shockwave though. We haven't seen it this game. Oli not really been able to perform on Alistar specifically. He was better on the part earlier when, on, when he plays Thresh as well. Yep. Haven't seen like. Any crazy engages from him, despite openings being there. Oh, Flame! Oh, Fofo finding Flame! He's gonna go into Zonia's, but he is almost certainly dead. Twin Fang and a pick by J Team will stop the Baron. Big mistake from Flame getting caught out there. Flame Fofo probably just ulting over the wall, slightly out of vision, stunning him and then taking him down. That's a tower now, and this was again perfect position for Immortals to take Baron in a team fight against no summoner spells on a Cassiopeia, but it's Fofo making the big play. Ole! And Jay making a big play as well for his team. Morning coming in, opening over the curtain call, returning, looting the arrow onto Archie. Redemption saves the cow's life. He would say probably anyway with the unbreakable will. And after all of those ultimates burnt and all those resources used, J Team will back away with big minion waves in the side lanes. After all, the Immortals can go back towards the Baron because there's still TP and Flash on Kennen. So it just delays the plan from Immortals of setting up that Baron and fighting against the Cassiopeia without a Flash. Is there any wards behind? There's one ward just above the Baron pit, but that's not ideal position for Teleport. The Immortals might have to just go back, reset the whole thing, get new control wards, get new wards. Yep, both are just out of vision, Flame. High chance he's actually looking at his team at that point. Like players obviously click, or click, click around a lot and just when he's about to react, he gets ulted from out of vision, can't react in time, and goes down. Mol's getting an Infernal Drake though. And again, we kind of at the point where I need to just reset, get your new side stone wards. You can see Ollie coming back from base, get your control wards, reset up around the Baron, and you still have a few minutes until Flash is ready. And you take that fight. Oli really needs to just pull the trigger with his flash. Once he gets any sort of opening. It's like I was saying in Champion Select as well. Lots of ways for Immortals to get into this fight. And Jay can't stop everyone from getting on his carries. So 
You come from Dalek Flank, Pobelter, Oli, Flame, Ash Arrow. Yeah. And that's a ways. That ward Oli placed for Flame to TP on was sadly in a very standard location, so instantly got cleared out by Jay. There's another ward now at the red buff. That can be the TP ward in case Flame is split pushing. Right now he is with the team though. Starting the Baron. They're looking for that fight. Mortals on the Baron yet again. Going down very fast. Baby. Turn call. Secured by Dada. Archie goes in. Archie Ofo, goes no out. Flash. But Fofo, he's on the front line. Oh. What an ultimate from Morning. Knocking away the ulti in Kennen. Redemption comes down. Big heal on the side of Immortals. But the Baron is now over, and hopefully they can crack open this base. A huge ulti from Morning there. That could have gone horribly wrong for J Team. Fofo staying alive because of Morning. Lose the Baron though. It is what the models need to get into the base. And with this second Baron, they should be able to open up some of these inhibitors. Game flow we've seen before. So Ollie's staying here to just deny Archie's entrance to the Baron pit. Get him down and look at Fofo taking a lot of damage without flash and then Oh what flame. timing. Almost getting in there, but great timing from morning. That's just well played by the puppy. For sure. And Fofo, he was trailing the team because he also got in there and landed a triple ulti. So uh, he was also doing very <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, you're going on the journey with me, mate. Dardock wants to get out though. Wall jumps. And Ollie's there to protect him. <laughs> was not a magical journey he wanted to be taking today, but he's fine. All right, before no flashing Cassiope, we switch it over to BB now. Another easy target to go for for Ollie. Still haven't seen him enter the fight on this Alistair. Obviously, he was on deny entrance duty. Dodok knocked against the wall. He's taking a lot of damage, but he'll jump back towards his ally. Going to be blocking up the arrow with the Banshee's Veil. Nice all over the wall from Pobelter. But it's Dodok who's going to pay the price. And Immortals with this four-man stack and the super minion wave coming in with Baron Buff. Oh, right, Baron jungle, Buff though Morning can TP on them. He's actually moving in now. It's 4v5. J team on the way. Charging off the hammer, triple man, ultimate and flame. He does have the ultimate still. He's gonna jump onto baby. He's dropping solo Fofo as well. Flame, no kill, no dice. And two fast kills over to J team. Did manage to break uh, open the base, but lost two members for it. This game is getting a little bit weird. The models are really struggling to use their advantage and their strong composition to actually force these proper fights. Sick ulti again for Morning. Getting three in perfect for him, honestly. Just leaving one behind. He can charge into his team. He'll be just staying alive in the end. Very close to going down, but two perfect ultis for Morning on this puppy. JT pick up a few kills, sadly for them, they're not able to get any objective in return. They're just able to kind of delay Immortals right now. Mid inhib or mid tower is down, so inhib is open. Meaning Immortals can go in there and force a fight around it. Did use a lot of summoners on their own though, and might just have to wait for another dragon to spawn. It is an Elder Drake coming, and remember guys, on this patch, an Elder Drake doesn't get stronger itself like it used to do, depending on how many dragons have been taken that game. The buff itself is just like before, only it lasts 30 seconds longer. So Elder Drake really is a better late game objective. It is very important now to actually play around it, because you can take it down so fast. It's yep. really hard before. If you had like four dragons, and you take Elder Drake, it literally took forever. And yep. the enemy team would just show up and contest it. I mean, it's a nice change, you know. You yeah, don't want to get punished change. for uh, actually taking those objectives beforehand, so now you can actually capitalize on it. It's it's one of those objectives you can use to now close out the game in these more, like, in these slower periods of, of the game. Problem is, obviously, it spawns so late, like 35 minutes into the game, so you can use it now, and the models might just wait for it to spawn and then grab it, and don't want to risk, like, an open 5-on-5 five five team fight at that inhib. J-Team will try and contest it, most likely. And that's where we have seen some, some tricky fights, like tanking the Elder Drake, Looking at the enemy team exactly where they are can be difficult. Especially with the disruption from BB, long range, curtain core. Fofo getting in there with the ultimate would be scary. Dodok, uh, I think he knew what it was around the corner. Managed to dodge all of it. And now they go back into the mid lane with this exposed in hip. Try and take this one away, but Ashi is around the side along with Morning to try and make this flank happen. Yeah, this is actually just as much a player just forcing JT to stay mid so that Immolus, if they don't go for in can just beeline straight down to the Dragon after and J-Team 
have to kind of follow behind them because they're forced into defending mid tower. So it's not so much a play for like rushing in hip. It's more just forcing the enemy team's position on the map. So you know exactly where they are. You can see every single member in front of you. And you know you can walk and face check bushes down to an Elder Drake. And have let out the bottom side jungle of J team like a Christmas tree. So if J team try to contest this dragon, then immortals will have complete vision of them as they try to make yep. their way down there. And that's where we see the trip down. J team obviously have to then follow. And then the problem is when you don't have any vision in your own jungle and you have to follow behind them, they can stop in every single brush on the way and you face check them and you die. So that's why J team is, is, is stopping and just. Really smart play, like it looks like a play for Inhib, it's actually not, it's just positioning and then if J team wants to stop the Elder Drake, they have to face check like two brushes at least and it's just too risky without flashing on, flashing on your Cassiopeia. Oof. Fofo using a ghost there. And that's just a really smart like macro play from Immortals. And now they have Elder Drake with three dragons, so oh, they're super strong and now you can get Inhib. Pushing down the mid lane, they have this Elder Dragon, should be able to uh, make something happen with this one. At least in a team fight. They will be significantly stronger. Archie, he's sitting on top of a control ward from his own team, so he knows that no one can see him. Charging up the poppy copter, knocks two away, but not actually that far. They're going to instantly yeah. regroup. And then we have a wave in the bottom lane from Immortals as well. So they want to just take this in him and then rush down and grab that wave. Nice hook onto Dardoch. This could be the start of something great from J Team. Redemption coming down. Will heal Dardoch just a little bit. And Morning evaporates. Was not as tanky as his, his team was hoping for. And Inhib will go down for Immortals. They will rotate to the bottom lane, try and replicate their success on the next tower. Yep, and they should be able to do it again. Remember, Elder Drake lasting 30 seconds longer is very important for these late game pushes. Good big wave here. Immortals are grabbing. Easy push in towards this tower. There is no front line, seeing as Poppy is dead. And whoopsie. Well, that was the engage we were hoping Ollie was going to do, and he yeah. didn't hit anyone with it. He's Alistar needs some work. That's yeah. definitely one thing we can conclude from this one game. Uh, anyway, trying to go for that one play. Ended up backfiring, and the ball is now instead of actually getting that free oh, tower, no, that's is losing a member again. That tower was there for you to just and take it. And that's even worse to Fisher because that's 50 seconds on Dardoch's death timer. And that's Baron has just spawned. So. Morning has teleport, he's alive now, coming with home guards. J team just going straight for Baron. Big, big mistake from Immortals, and they might get punished. Let's see. Flame is still insanely fed on this cannon. If you can get into the Baron pit. Oh, great miasma wall. Flame can't even flash in there when he's on top of that. Morning with the TP. Where's the secure? Archie! I think he got it. No, it came into Oriana to steal from Hoelter. Now Flame will get in there as well with the ultimate and take down three members. Dardoch is still down, but that's four kills. And despite that actually being secured by Fofo in the end, I misread the uh, the kill counter. Dude, Doesn't matter, fair. Immortals killed everyone. Exactly, like Baron Rexai, it almost looked the same in the images, but Archie had no smite, so he was waiting and waiting, and they stayed in there for such a long time. Immortals pushing for the finish now. And what a way for this game to end as well. Looked like J-Team had the advantage. They got their pick onto Dardoch. And in the end, only Fofo left to defend this lone super minion on top of four members strong. Dardoch looking to reinforce. Immortal should be able to finish this one off. Nothing that Fofo can do, unfortunately. And the Nexus will finally go down. Immortal secure it. Two and one over J-Team and to secure their spot in the semi-finals. Playing the long con there, sacrifice data to give them false hope. Think, you know, oh, you can run Baron now, you can start the Baron, and then 